basketball training session watching them play and they are amazing so much time more time than I'm gonna be later on I'm gonna have a go I'm trying to score a three pointer wish me luck but no chance uh, I'm Finn I'm Peter um, so John tell me more about yourself uh, I get involved in Michigan basketball yeah well I've been playing for uh, 11 years now since I was eight uh, the way I was found was in a shopping centre with my uh, mum and the lady who plays on my team, most of my mates that I play for now. Uh, she asked my parents if I ever thought about playing and it was a typical. She brought me down once and after that I just loved it. Yeah. Ever since. Yeah, it was good. Thanks. So, what, what sort of level were you playing at and what are you uh, I'm a part of the GB under 22 squad at the minute. Uh, we've got Europeans next year, we've done our way here. Right. Uh, but I'm hoping in the future. To go to stuff like the Power and Peace and World Championships or all yeah. stuff like that. Oh, amazing. And in terms of how you've kind of progressed throughout the sport, how long have you played for it? How did you find it when you first started? Uh, well, I started when I was eight, so I've been playing for a long time, but uh, I had that childish exuberance and I was just excited to be playing and I was dead fast when I was yeah. a kid and I, it was just loads of fun, so I didn't really bother me. But it was, it was tough when it had been lots of years, it was tough to keep playing. It was fun. Okay. Uh, so in terms of the rules of the game of uh, um, butcher basketball, how is the game played? Uh, it's the same as running basketball, uh, the same, it's the same size court, the net's the same height, about 10 feet, right? and I think the court's like 50 feet by 40, 6 feet or something like that, uh, or a half court, so it's about 94 feet, the whole length of it. Um, but the, the only difference is in wheelchair basketball is there's no double dribble. Um, and there's no carry. But it's the same for travelling and stuff, so it's two pushes and you've got balance the same way you've got to do two steps and that. Yeah. And it's obviously a bit more of a challenge with the wheelchair to end. Yeah, you get used to that. Yeah. yeah first of all, I've got to practice. I can imagine. Yeah. Let's get to just that. No worries, man. That's easy. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm Chris, Chris Boothby. Um, I've been playing wheelchair basketball for about seven years now. I've um, played sort of multiple different levels, uh, from beginner all the way up to sort of developmental GB kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I love the sport. It's uh, sort of saved me from a lot of downtimes and you know really picked me up from whenever I've needed a couple of friends or you know it's a great escape from a bit of life so yeah. And in terms of you playing the sport, how did you first start off? Uh, I first started off uh, watching the London Paralympics when I was in the spinal unit. Um, so when I had my accident it was, it was televised all over the TV which was obviously great for the sport. Um, obviously as years have gone on it stayed on Channel 4 but it just seems to be the Paralympics at the minute but you know, things are in development and hopefully, you know, we can get it out to the public, you know, really get it a broad spectrum. Um, that's sort of how I noticed it when I first was injured. And then I sort of made contact within the hospital, within the uh, within sport. And uh, as soon as I got out of hospital um, in about October 2012, first week out of hospital, I went down to my first, se uh, first session, down, went down with my bricks and been playing for them ever since. Yeah, and uh, for, for the Mavericks, obviously, how's the season gone this year? And what's the next year? You've got another new season. And when does that start? Yeah. Um, so the, our season, uh, our season finished in sort of May June. Um, it's been an interesting season. I've, I've taken a little, taken a little bit of a back step from the higher divisions. So I've played Division Three this season, which has been great to develop our newer players. Um, our higher developed players have really come on this season. They've, I think they came fifth in the first division, which is it's not what they hoped for, but it was only a you know 
it was literally one point games for a lot of them. Um, so we're looking to really develop into the new season. New season should, should start um, around um, September, October. Um, we're really looking forward to it. You know, looking to hopefully be really in contention for the top spot of the Division One North. So yeah. And since the division is anything about that and how that So there's this sort of divisions. This this four sectors. Um, or two sectors depending on the league yeah. uh, and depending on how many teams. Um, so the, there's starting very low is the developmental league, that's sort of division four or you know developmental where the new players will start. Then you've got division three which is the players that have been in developmental or still start first starting out and then you've got division two which is the next level up from that. Then you've got that from there, you've got Division 1, and then from there you've got the Premier League. So each division, apart from the Premier League, is split into North and South, which will, um, all teams in the North will face off against each other, all teams in the South will face off against each other. And then even from there, you can also have two groups, which will be North West or North East, and South East and South West, depending on how many teams are in the league. You know, etc etc um, but with the Premier League that is select you know the highest grade teams of eight so there's eight teams in that league and they play from London all the way up to Glasgow and they you know they that they are the cream of the crop they're the GB boys yeah. they're the people that have been in the, in the game for years and years they know how to fake you out, shoot and still score the basket before you even know what's happened, before you have even thought about defending them. Amazing. And in terms of development, like, so if you were to start off the game, how do you start off? Where do you begin? I'd say um, go, on to, go on to Google, go onto the internet, have a little bit of look uh, on what your local nearest club is, find the contact details and then just, you know, Give them an email, give them a call. Uh, best website to go for um, is probably the GB, uh, GBWB. I think that's correct. Might have to uh, Google that um, for you know Great British Wheelchair Basketball Association. Um, on their website, they've got uh, a web page where you can put your postcode in. You put your postcode in. They'll come up with your local club. That'll give you all the details. Latest contact, latest email, latest uh, phone number. Give them a ring, go down to their first session, and they'll be able to sort you out with hopefully a chair. Um, or if not, they'll definitely introduce you to someone that will have a spare chair, and then you can get started from there. And am I right in saying it's a mixture of disabilities and ages and genders? And yeah, definitely. Well. Yeah, so as you, as you probably saw today, we had um, sort of everyone from Young players, old players, from experienced players to new players, you know, from severe disabilities like myself, all the way through to able-bodied people uh, today like Darius uh, that came down from the club and everything in between. So it's it is the most inclusive sport in the world. You know, we we don't prejudice against anything. We you know we, we accept everyone, every. Every shape, size, disability, doesn't matter where you've got if you're missing a leg, arm, fingers. We if, if you can have, if you can push that chair, you can bounce that ball, you can play wheelchair basketball. Mm. And that's what the sport's about. Thanks so much. Thank you. Cheers.
자, 그러니까 이 사람한테 주냐? 